having a look at these, we've got all of the operations, almost, right? We've got addition, subtraction, multiplication, and there's one sad operation missing, namely division. Thank you very much. So you can finish this heading, which is dividing. It's, it's a verb. Dividing decimals by whole numbers, okay? Now we've done lots of division before. I'm going to get rid of these orphan numbers because they look a bit weird just standing here randomly. We've done division before. We've done long division. For this, I'm going to use short division. We haven't done that for a while, but um, it's a lot quicker. And for most of the problems we'll encounter, it's pretty easy. So as an example, I'm going to do three with you, okay? Let's think about how to use short division to write something like this. By the way, quick question. When you multiply two numbers together, we call that a product. Product. When you divide two things together, what do we call that? Yeah. Quotient. A quotient, very good. So to work out this quotient, I'm going to write, to solve this, um, just like you've seen before, this symbol is the same for long division as short division. Okay. So I write my number that's going to be divided over there. Actually, I'm going to space them out just a little bit extra. Like that. And then the number that I'm dividing with, the divisor, it's going to come over here on the left hand side. Okay? So, so far, so, far, so good. I'm going to go through this just like I do, normally do with um, division. I think how many fours go into what? Answer? Zero. zero. Sorry, I write zero there. Now, maybe since you haven't done short division for a while, you can't remember what happens next. Because I haven't used this one, right? I haven't used this one. It comes along for the ride. I haven't used them up. Okay. And then I say, well, how many fours feed into two. this next number? Two. And the answer is I can fit two of them. Right. Okay. Now, hold on a second. Something a bit unusual happens. Because it looks like when you used up those two fours, I've still got some numbers yeah. left over, right? So what should I do next? Um basically um put the two next to the zero and put another zero on your back. Okay. We've done short division with whole numbers before. But not so much with decimals. Decimals are new to us, okay? Now here's the thing, right? Pause for a moment. Pens out of hands. Because I want you all to know something crazy and kind of wrong just happened. And I wonder how many of you noticed it's the past. Um, before I wrote this part down, which everyone sort of agrees we should do, I had this. Do you agree? Yeah. That's what I had? And then suddenly, magically, 10 has turned into 100? Now, in my books, I don't know about... You know, I know I learnt maths a long time ago, but I'm pretty sure it's still the same that 10 and 100, not the same number. So what am I missing? A decimal point. Okay, so a decimal point has to come in here, right? And actually, this is okay. If I wanted to, I could add as many zeros as I like here, right? Because that just tells me what small bits are trailing along this 10, and the answer is none. So that's okay, right? Now I have a look again, and I see if I can finish this thing off. I've got the 2 and the 0 are 20, so how many 4s are going to go into there? How many 4s into 20? Five. 5. But remember, up on the top here, right, just like I added a decimal point here, I'm going to add a decimal point here. Is there another one? Okay. Yeah. Nope. I think that? that's it. Oh, uh, that's, um, that's a dent. Sorry. Oh. That's, a, that's a dent on my whiteboard. <laughs> okay. So here's what I'm going to write down. I've got my 10 divided by 4 equals, apparently, 2.5, okay? Now, as is true in so many parts of mathematics, if you get an answer, yeah. you should be able to check whether it's true. How could I do that? Yeah. Two times 4 by, look, 2.5. 4 times 2.5. Now, we've done multiplication with decimals for quite a while now. Does it work out? Does it work out? It does, right? Because look, you could do the whole numbers first. 4 times 2 is? 8. eight. And then you can do the decimal part. Two. 4 times 0 0.5 is 2, which gives you the 10 you're hoping for. Thumbs up. <laughs> Thank you. All right, here we go. Second example, right? Here are the numbers I'm after. A bit sneakier this time. Okay, now, what's interesting about this question is that you can do this one quite easily two ways, and I'm going to show you both, okay? First, let's just use the method we've already got. So this is the number that's going to be underneath the division sign. 0 0.5. Zero, one, eight. By the way, did you notice why I'm adding so many spaces? Like I'm sort of spreading them out a little bit? So you can add like remainders if you want to. Yeah, yeah, it's these guys, right? Like if I wrote them the way I'd normally write them, like say like this, all my numbers are going to get all jammed between. So that's why you can see they're all 
spread out like that. And there's the six. Okay, let's do the division. Where do I begin? What should I write first? Someone else, we need to get a suggestion from someone else. Okay, so I say how many sixes in zero? Answer, zero. zero, right? So there are none there. There's a decimal point here, so I better include the decimal point there. I keep going, how many sixes? Zero. zero. How many sixes? Zero. zero. But, I haven't used all this number, right? So this one comes along for the right. Make sense? Mm -hmm. And now I ask, three. how many sixes in 18? And the answer is? Three. Perfect. Are there any remainders? No. Okay, so I can conclude that this is equal to, uh, have a look, 0 0.003. Okay? Now, question? Or suggestion? Or... Um, so basically, is it just division? You just you have to put a point where the other points are? Yeah, it's division, keeping in mind there's decimals involved. Now, really, really quickly before I give you the third and final example. You remember I said you can do this one actually two ways, right? When you have a look at these numbers, right? Can you see that there's an 18, this 18 that we have to deal with? And there's a 6, and then there's like decimal points flying around, right? But 18 divided by 6, you could have done that right from the beginning. That's just 3, right? Now, what you want to say is, okay, well, 18 divided by 6 is 3. Think carefully. How much smaller is this number than this number? How many times smaller is it? Think carefully. Hmm. Aiden, what do you reckon? Uh, a thousand. Okay, a thousand times smaller? How would I work out whether it is a thousand times smaller or not? Or like ten times or ten thousand? How, how could I do it? Jerry, what do you reckon? Okay, I can actually do the division, right? But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say 18. If I divide it by 10 once, I'll get 1.8. Yes? If I divide it by 10 again, I'll get 0 0.18. And if I divide it by 10 one more time, I get 0 0.018. So how many times did I divide by 10? Three times. Three times. So 10, 100, 1,000. This is 1,000 times bigger than this, right? So therefore, if what I've got over here is 1,000 times too big, that's all right. Just make your answer a thousand times smaller. Does that make sense? Which is exactly what I've got over here. This is a thousand times smaller than that three over there. Okay? So you can employ either of those methods. Last question. Here we go. And it is the trickiest of the lot, that's why I saved it for last. Here we go. Can you have a go at this one without me holding your hand first? Have a shot, see what you can come up with, just be careful with it, alright? I'll write out the actual division for you, but then I want you to see what you can make of it. Okay, I've, I see a few more hands up. I'm gonna get my answer up on the board and you can confirm or see if something went wrong and we can work it out together, okay? So follow along with me. Here is what I've got, and by the way, those of you who've already finished the question know, might be useful to me if I do something like this, okay? Yeah. I'm going to start it off just like I start off my other divisions. So I say to myself, how many eights can I fit in two? Answer. Zero. 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 And then as soon as I go to the next one, I run into a decimal point. So, better write him down. Now, because I've done, I haven't fit any eights in there, this two, it comes along for the ride. So now I say, how many eights in? 26. And there are three, three of them, right? Two but three, three, 24, there's two left over. So I'm gonna write two again, which is a bit deja vu. That's fine, I just do it again. Three. But now, think back to this question we did before, right? Normally at this point in a, with whole numbers, I'd say, ooh, there's a remainder. So I'd write remainder whatever. But this isn't a whole number, it's a decimal. I can work further. What should I do? Okay, I'm going to put some more zeros, okay? So if I write just one here, the remainder from the three lots of eight in here will be two. So I'll write this two down. And now I ask myself, okay, how many eights are going to fit into this 20? And the answer is two of them. By fitting in two, I've got two times eight was 16. So there's four I haven't used in there. So that means I need another zero for that remainder to hang on to. And finally, I can say, how many eights 
in 40? And the answer is five, and I'm finished. Okay? 